Good morning, everyone. Join me as I use QChat to see if it can help me modernize an application. Hello, everyone. I wanted to try uh, the new Q CLI, uh, so I decided to have a little fun. It's my Saturday morning here. I'm going to take an application I wrote, say, 15 years ago, 10 years ago at least. Um, where it was an old uh, J2EE or Java EE application. So here we have uh, some SQL files, so probably creating the database tables, probably with DB2. I have some EJBs, this old Java technology, go into product search, uh, product search service. We have an implementation that's loading some queries using uh, most likely uh, JPA, persistence, you know, entity manager, it's finding an object, customer order implementation, so it's a sample shopping app at line item. You see it's creating persistent objects um, and using business logic to how applications were written maybe over a decade ago. And so we have some POJOs and some objects. So I wanted to see if you can use Q to actually help modernize and move this a little bit to AWS. I'm going to play around with it. Okay, so let's use Q chat. Just type Q chat to get into a prompt. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to describe the architecture uh, and the artifacts inside of the Git repo. Okay, after the LLM was thinking, it's kind of giving me a description, some application overview. The architecture, it talks about the database tier, it identifies DB2, it talks about EJB and the versions. Presentation tier, Dojo, testing components, describes a bit about the security, deployment, the project structure. It talks about the build components using Maven. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to ask to save this report in a directory. I'll put it in the same git repo and call it migration artifacts so that it saves this. After it's thinking, I could just say yes, go ahead and save this into a file. So Q is describing the report it generated for me. It described the three-tier architecture breakdown, the security model, deployment structure. I open in the file directory and I see there's a migration report. Open it in my uh, IDE. And you can see that um, it describes all the things that it printed out and it gave me some information about the application. Let's see if it can help me a little bit more. I'm going to ask it to describe the database schema for me. Okay, as I finished thinking, generated a report. Let's scroll up a little bit and see. You see it's describing the database structure, the product table, and it has the relationships uh, between the tables. I could actually save that file and it will save the database schema report for me. And it'll tell me that it created the report describing the database tables with the columns and a separate inventory database as well. Next, I'm going to ask to see if I can migrate these SQL scripts uh, to use Postgres instead of DB2. Okay, so it generated out a new set of SQL files for Postgres. I'm going to have to save it and now it's going to create it. It's doing the same thing for uh, the next database as well. This is pretty exciting. So it's creating the inventory database. It actually converted the uh, test data as well with the insert statement. So it's actually creating the SQL scripts with data for me. So this is nice. It's generating out Postgres sample data 
as well for the different tables. So this is pretty cool. And lastly, it is creating uh, scripts and a migration guide, database schema scripts, sample data, and a migration guide. And it's giving me some hints and keys to the migration that's in the migration guide. So this is pretty awesome. Next, I'm going to ask what recommendations do you have to modernize the application and run it in AWS? Okay, so it actually gave me some recommendations here. If we scroll a little bit, we see that actually generated some health checks, some code. Um, let's write this into a migration file and have a look at it inside of our IDE. Okay, so it's telling me to containerize the application, migrate the database to Postgres, which we already have the created script, so I've remembered that. It asked, gave me a choice between ECS or EKS, actually gave me some updates from Java EE to Jakarta EE, so latest versions of the open source move EJBs to CDI, update the JAXRS and JPA versions. It's giving me a recommendation to replace the Dojo toolkit with a modern framework like React, Angular, or Vue, implement an API gateway. Then it has the next phase where it's asking me to decompose some of the microservices down and introduce event-driven architecture with Kafka. Gave me a couple of options to do that with, either Fargate or Lambda. Uh, gave me some options around databases. So it looks like it has a pretty plan and it has a timeline, two to three weeks, at containerization, application updates, front end, and actually generated some configuration code to replace uh, uh, GND lookups and gave me some implementation, some details around things like security and operations. So pretty cool. So full modernization with some recommended timeline reports. Uh, that's pretty awesome. It also asks to generate an architecture diagram, which is pretty cool. So we open that file and you see it, it generated command line style diagram with some of the application components. That's a, a great starting point. All right, it's actually asking to generate a Docker Compose file to deploy the application, probably better for ECS. And it's asking me to generate the Docker file. So this is a great accelerator. Uh, to copy the Docker file uh, using the latest Java EE. So we'll say yes to that. So not a bad job. It's using Open Liberty. It copies the ear file. So it's using the open source version of uh, WebSphere, which is great. So it's actually generating some server XML. This might be a configuration file for that server. So so here we have a server XML file for Open Liberty. It's now configured to go to Postgres instead of the legacy DB2 database. So that's great. So it's coming back and talking to me about the modernization stack and what should I do and what steps would I want to do. But I think I want to do something a little different. I would like to actually, that would be good if I can spell, replace JPA code with regular SQL because let's face it, SQL is much more standardized and ubiquitous and JPA is an abstract technology and I'd rather transform my data less. So let's see how I can do. All right, so after reading some of my Java implementation files, it is actually generating code take a look at this code it generated the order interface so I can go ahead and write that to file and it's breaking down the tasks into smaller steps so they're going to replace the load customer implementation it looks like it's regular SQL code using more JDBC API so that's much better and it looks like it's migrating the product search service as well. And now it looks like it generated a readme file 
to kind of describe the changes it's made with the SQL implementation, each function that it did. So this is pretty exciting. We could write that to file and we have a nice little migration description for JPA to SQL and then summarizing all the steps and the changes that it made with the new version of the code um, with some key benefits as well. Direct SQL series are more optimized, no need for JPA, easier to migrate between different databases. So this is pretty, pretty cool. So I think next, one of the other changes I want to see if it can help me with is maybe replacing some of the web applications. So I saw that it used Dojo. That's a very old JavaScript framework. And I want to use something like React instead because a lot of the web developers on my team tell me React is really cool. Some of them like Vue, but it's going to think now. I read some of the JavaScript files and it actually has some code that it generated. So it's actually asking to generate some configuration files in JavaScript. So it's going to go and actually generate the package.json, which describes the application. Pretty cool. All right, this is pretty cool. It actually generated the HTML markup for the application in React. So this is awesome. So next, it generated some cascading style sheets, so some CSS files for the React web app. You can actually see, and it's CSS for the application. Next, it generated some JavaScript, and it looks like some of the JavaScript to make calls to the RESTful endpoints in the JAX-RS application. So that's pretty cool as well. So let's generate that file. Looks like it's generating the different uh, HTML and JavaScript pages for the movie. So uh, product catalog.js, pretty cool. Wow, it generated a bunch of code for me. It kept my React front end, communicates with the same REST API. So it's giving me a bit of a readme file. This is awesome. And now it's giving me a project setup. It told me it replaced the Dojo components with a set of React components, some documentation, some API. I'm going to ask it to update the modernization plan to now include earlier on the changes for JPA um, to SQL and to use React as well. After some thinking, it's made some updates. This is really awesome. So here we have the QCLI. It's talking about the different stages. So we see an updated timeline, finalized modernization code, including SQL and React, do some infrastructure setup two to three weeks, application containerization, migrate the database to RDS, front end deployment, microservices, Lots of other things around security and observability that we saw before. This is awesome. So it gave me an updated modernization plan with some of my changes. And it also went ahead and updated the architecture diagrams and updates based on the updates I made with Postgres and JDBC and SQL to the architecture. So this is a really awesome, productive Saturday morning helping me migrate and modernize an old application. QChat is summarizing my work around the application migration, SQL, React, some implementation timelines, updated architecture. So this is pretty awesome. I might play around with it next weekend to generate some of the deployment artifacts and get the application working. We'll see. But uh, try out QChat. Lots of fun.